What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. Glad to be here. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today, we're taking a question from the audience, and that question was, how do you target juvenile Goliath groupers? So first of all, I don't know why we call little Goliath groupers juveniles when we call baby tarpon baby tarpon. So call them what you want, juvenile Goliath groupers, baby Goliath groupers, small Goliath groupers, whatever you want to call them. The Goliath grouper gets to be 600 pounds or more, but somewhere along the line, they're not, they're not born that big. So they grow from a smaller size up to a really big size. And it's been my experience that they are in certain places when they're young and then at a certain size, maybe about 60 pounds, 50, 60 pounds, maybe, maybe more, um, they start to make their way out to other areas where they tend to grow larger. They have more food at their disposal, but there are some places where these smaller Goliath groupers do like to hang out. I have been able to figure out some of those places, mostly because of where I was fishing for the small tarpon, and I would actually see Goliath groupers under the bushes. Same thing for redfish and snook spots. Sometimes you can see a Goliath grouper under the bush. And those are good spots. They're okay for catching one or two. But as I started to find out that many people, from especially from the Midwest or the South, that love to bass fish, um, thought these fish were fantastic because maybe the biggest bass they've ever caught in their entire life is 10 pounds. You could go out and you could catch a 20-pound Goliath grouper on very similar tackle, and uh, they fight probably much harder than a largemouth bass, and they are a spectacular fish, if you ask me. So occasionally we would catch these. Um, I started to try to figure out, okay, well, if we can catch them occasionally, how can we start to target them a little more frequently? And so that's what we're going to go over today today how to target them a little more frequently. So some of the things that we want to talk about first are where those fish would be. We mentioned places that you would baby tarpon fish, snook fish, redfish. Those are good spots. Mangrove shoreline type areas. Now you could see one anywhere along a mangrove shoreline. Anywhere that there's a redfish, a snook, or baby tarpon, there is likely to be enough water depth, enough habitat, enough food to support a Goliath grouper as well. So any of those spots are good places to start. But as you start to try to really hone in on where you can find a, a, a congregation of these fish, it's going to be on a deeper area, than, and you're probably not going to be able to see them. And um, in these type of areas, what I'm looking for is going down a shoreline where the current, you know, typically you're going to have an incoming tide going one way and outgoing tide's going to go the other. So these spots may work really well on an incoming tide, but may not work as well on an outgoing tide. But let's just say that the, that the current is at our back and we're going down a shoreline and that shoreline has a little hook in it where the, it kind of goes down straight and then it kind of juts out a little bit in front of you and then keeps going. Well, the, all that current is flowing directly into that little area. It's it's like a wall. And it's been my experience that that is where you can find them really congregated. Now, if the tide turns and the tide's going the other way, that may not be as good of a spot. In fact, they may move out of there and move over to another spot where the tide is flowing right into their face. And that tends to be um, one of the best Places. If you really want to know how to find them, put on a mask and fins, get in there and snorkel around on these mangrove shorelines. It will become very, very obvious where they are. That is um, the best way to find them. But if you don't want to do that, you can just kind of prospect down the shoreline. Things I'm looking for. I'm looking for activity, life. I want to see snappers. I want to see bait. I want to see pilchards. I want to see lots of life. There needs to be lots of life. It'd be great if there were redfish and snook there. That would make it even a better spot. And you will find spots like that where you're catching a, a, a redfish, a snook, a goliath, a baby tarpon. You know, they're all there and they're all there for a reason. There is life, there's activity, there's food, there's clean water, there's water flow. All of that is the recipe for finding these fish and the other ones as well. So in order to start to catch them, one of the things about 
catching the Goliath grouper is that they are around these other fish. They're around these other fish because they want to eat those other fish and because of all the uh, recipe that I just mentioned. If there's clean water, flowing water, bait, all of that, that is a place where all the fish want to live. So that's where they're going to be. So if you decide that you're going to go after these fish with live shrimp, for example, you're never going to catch one. You're never going to catch one because the smaller snappers are going to get to it. It's the same reason why you never catch a really giant snapper on a live shrimp because the little ones get in there and they love to eat that live shrimp. So you can go there and there may be giant snappers under there. There may be redfish and snook and and giant goliath groupers under there, but you're not going to catch very many or any at all because the little snappers are just going to chew you up. So you have to come up with a bait that is big enough that the snappers won't mess with it. So those baits are mullet, pinfish, and pilchards to an extent if they're really big. You could find some other, you know, maybe a ballyhoo might work. They don't I have trouble keeping those alive as well uh, in this type of fishing. So really for me, it is pinfish and mullet. And you can adjust your pinfish trap to catch exactly the size pinfish that you want. You can adjust the funnels so that the the uh, really uh, big ones can't fit in there. You can make it to where, you know, you can you can get the size pinfish that you want. Basically, that size pinfish is going to fit through your funnel. You can start to catch just the right ones for these and for the Goliath grouper. And the just the right one is the one that's too big for a snapper, unless it's a really mongo snapper. And uh, and so that and the mullet are excellent baits for that reason. You're not going to catch the small snappers. If you catch a snook or a redfish, nobody's going to be upset with that. If you catch a small tarpon, nobody's going to be upset with that. Uh, but you're going to be working your way more towards those Goliath groupers. Now, once you find the place that you're going to fish um, and you've got the bait, either the pinfish or the mullet, um, now you're ready to actually fish for them. So. We want to, you, you can get the boat pretty close to the mangroves uh, for these fish. They're not really that spooky because generally they are under the bushes. So a boat pushing in there on them, unless you just run them over and move all the bushes over their head, they're not going to be too spooky about the boat. And you're going to need to get the boat in fairly close because you're going to have to have a very precise cast. You're going to have to be casting under the bushes with a live bait, which is pretty tough. So if you if you cast it six feet from the bushes, you're probably not going to catch any. If you cast it two feet from the bushes, you might start to catch a couple. If you cast it two feet under the bushes, now you're talking. If you can get it six feet under there, awesome. If there's some kind of hole that you can, you can get it back in there, you're going to start to catch more and more. Uh, Goliath grouper, or like any other fish, uh, action brings more action. So if you start to get into uh, a spot, you may not just immediately start catching Goliath grouper. You may want to start catching a bunch of snappers. Catch the snappers. The snappers are throwing up stuff when they when they get caught. You're catching those. There's activity. That starts to bring everything out from the bushes. And um, that is fantastic. Once that starts to happen, the Goliaths will move out. You get your bigger bait in, in the area, and you're likely to get bit. Now, I like to get my bait pinned to the bottom. So if I'm using a small pinfish, I can do that with just a, a, a quarter ounce jig head or maybe a three eighths ounce jig head. I'll hook that right through the lip and I'll throw the, the pinfish out to where it's going to take a nose dive to the bottom. And then it's going to be uh, moving and kicking down towards the bottom because the jig head's holding the, uh, the pinfish down on the bottom. That to me is good because what I know about that pinfish is it's not going to go start swimming around all the roots. The same thing's true with a mullet, even more so with a mullet. If you get a good cast in there with a weightless mullet, now it's going to start swimming around and it can get you all tied up around the roots and that's no good. So when you do catch a fish or get a bite, now you're tied up around the roots. That is not a good situation. So a jig head is my favorite. I like the I like the weight to be right down on the hook, either a jig head or a hook with weight right over the top of it. I don't like to use like a uh, a knocker rig or a Carolina rig or anything like that where the weight is up the line because as you cast to the bushes, the thing starts to helicopter 
And when the thing helicopters, your whole rig is helicoptering, you're very likely to get it caught in the bushes. And you got to remember that in order to catch these fish, you need a precise cast. So I don't want anything above my hook. I want the weight right down on the hook, like a jig head or a weight right there. And then I'm going to get precise casting into the bushes. So a lot of people, as they start to find the Goliaths or they, they want to find them, they're fishing with tackle that's too heavy. And a big tarpon rod is a good idea for a 60-pound fish underneath the bushes. But most people are having trouble casting that accurately enough to get it under the bush. That's why I'll go with like a 10 to 20 pound rod. My favorite one. In fact, the interesting thing about this whole podcast and this question as it comes in right now is that our um, debut show for 2021 is catching Goliath groupers under the mangroves. And so it's fresh in my mind, exactly the tackle that we used, exactly the way that we did it. And, um, that's why it's kind of interesting. So on January 1st or whenever the debut is, you can see this show um, come on. It'll probably be on Waypoint before that. Um, and we'll tell you when, it, when it's on um, through the podcast, of course. And you, can, you can go check it out and you can learn a lot more about catching Goliath groupers. But it's important to have a, an accurate cast. So what I was using in this last show, I started using a heavier rod. This rod was seven and a half feet long, or seven feet, 11 inches long, almost eight feet long. And it was a, it was a perfect rod for fishing uh, tarpon at the bridge. It was a St. Croix rod. I found that it was, I was not able to get my bait where I wanted it to. So I went down in tackle size to a seven foot Triumph rod by St. Croix. It's the medium heavy action. So that's a 10 to 20 pound uh, class rod. It had 20 pound, uh, Daiwa J braid on it. And I used a 4,000 size Daiwa Sertate reel. I put a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader on it and the jig head that, that we're talking about a three eighths ounce jig head on this day. We were using pinfish because we didn't, we couldn't get any mullet. So we were using the pinfish and that turned out to be a great rig because I was able to get it under the bushes. And that was a real big key to catching any of these fish. If we weren't close enough to the bushes or far enough under the bushes, we were not getting any bites. And so that was super key. Goliath groupers will probably eat just about anything. um, But in fishing for a lot of redfish, in in the redfish spots where we fish under the bushes, fishing for um, other fish, even just fishing for Goliath groupers and catching them and seeing what they cough up as you're catching them. These small Goliath groupers love to eat crabs. They often cough up a lot of crabs. They cough up lobsters, small lobsters, um, all the time. I see that all the time. Bunch of shrimp, crabs, lobsters. They love to eat that stuff. So you certainly can't fish with undersized lobsters and that's what they like to eat. So one good bait for a Goliath grouper is a crab, especially if you're getting eaten alive by the by the snappers. And that's not what you're after. Even if you have pinfish that are too small, the snappers will get those. It's great because you can catch some really nice snappers in these same same situations. But if you're really looking for the Goliath grouper, consider a crab. A crab works really well. I've used crabs for redfish under the bushes. You get a surprise, you're fishing for a redfish and all of a sudden you get a good thump. You think it's going to be a really big redfish. It turns out to be a Goliath grouper. They eat crabs really well. So that is a potential bait. If you can't get the um, the shrimp, I mean, if you can't get the pinfish or the mullet, you could go with store-bought crabs and have a reasonable chance of catching those. You might also surprise yourself in some of these spots where you can't see and see redfish or catch redfish under the bushes as well. So that is uh, that's pretty good. I like to fish with um, with a circle hook if I can, but if I'm using this this um, jig head like we're talking about, I'm going to have my rod tip up and I'm going to be kind of feeling that bait, especially with a braid. It's really easy. A Goliath grouper has a thump, like a serious thump, maybe one, two thump kind of bite. And you get to set the hook like a bass fisherman and then you get to... Uh, to really fight them under the bushes. I tend to 
kind of play them easy because I think that my philosophy on really mean fish like Goliath groupers, Jack Cravels, uh, Giant Trevally, uh, even Tarpon and Permit, um, is the more you fight against them, the more they pull against you. So if they are kind of uh, heading back into the bushes, I don't think it's a life or death kind of thing. I, I see them go back in the bushes all the time. You can get them out because the mangroves oftentimes don't go all the way down to the bottom. They hang over and look like they do, but there is a ledge under there and there's really not a lot of stuff to get caught on. I like to let them just go on back in there. You don't break your line. You don't straighten out the hook and you kind of let them go back under the bushes and then start to work them back out. Now, don't get me wrong. You got to put plenty of pressure on them, but I don't think it's necessary to just absolutely lock the drag down. And if they get anywhere near the bushes, you're going to lose them. I don't think it's like that. So that's why I tend to fish with a little bit lighter tackle. I tend to keep the drag light and palm the, the, the drag. That's pretty much how I do it on all uh, fish. I don't really use the real drag as much as, as some anglers might. I, I use my hand a little bit more, and I like that better because if I feel like they go around something, I can just take my hand completely off the reel, and they can pull that line pretty easily around any of the uh, branches, dead wood, anything that's down there. So uh, that's that's how I do it. You can do it any way you want. A lot of people like Rich, he's very heavy handed on these fish. He does not like to let them get up under the bushes and, um, and he catches them just fine. So you just got to be ready for that. Uh, it's a different style, different technique. It work, both work. So we've gone over the tackle. We've gone over where to find them. We've gone over the baits and it's important also to know, uh, that it is illegal to take these fish out of the water. So, and, and, you know, maybe there's a gray area there, there's no reason to take these fish out of the water, none whatsoever. You uh, just um, lip them with a glove. They have a lot of teeth uh, and just slip the hook out and let them go. There's no reason to, to pull them out of the water. Uh, maybe there's a gray area on what is legal and what is not legal as far as what is taking them out of the water, what is not taking them out of the water. Best practice is don't take them out of the water. Just don't, don't pull them out of the water. Leave them in the water and let them go. They're a very hardy fish. They're going to do really well. So minimize the handling, minimize pulling them out of the water or, or eliminate that completely. And you're not going to get in any trouble from the fish and wildlife uh, or, or uh, any, any agency that is protecting them. And um, you'll be just fine. And you're also going to protect the fish. So tackle, baits, where to find them and techniques for uh, hooking them. So that's the Goliath Grouper 101. I hope that helps. If it does, share this with one of your friends. Send me an email at podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. Let me know if this helped. If you got further questions, we can do a part two on this if you would like. Um, and then get ready for that show that we're going to debut. It's going to come out right at the first of the year. Saltwater Experience. It's gone Waypoint first. Then it's going to be on Sportsman's Channel and then Discovery. And you can see how exactly how we did it, exactly what we used. All right, that's How To Tuesday for today. We'll see you next week.